Welcome to Fairy Tale Access. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in fairy tales. Hi, welcome to Fairy Tale Access. Today, we're going to discover a little more about the home healthcare field. And with us to discuss this for seniors is MAS Home Care. And my guests are Jay. Hamill, the Vice President and Co-Founder, and Molly Marino, the Director of Marketing. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank, thank you for you having us here. Oh, my pleasure. So can you give us a little bit of information about MAS Home Care? Yes. Uh, well, MAS Medical Staffing started in 2002, June. Mm -hmm. MAS Home Care spun out in, in New Hampshire in March of 2009, and we've just grown it from there. And we're in multiple states. Well, so you're one of the co-founders. Correct. What's your background? What got you interested in this field? Well, we're, I was at sales for many years in high-tech recruiting. Mm -hmm. And then high-tech recruiting kind of fell off in the 2000, 2001 time frame. And we were looking at different options to get involved with. Home care and medical staffing was uh, on the rise. So we decided to get into that. And, make a difference. Fantastic. So what makes this company different than other home health care agencies? Well, I think a lot of things, but mainly the people who work there. Um, we do a number of different things, um, but we have a lot of good staff, the people that have been with us, that have been with us since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody has left um, over a four or five year period which is very nice. So consistency is a big thing. So our staff is really what makes the difference. Oh, great. And what about the, the packages for the seniors? What type of services do you offer? Is it just like one size fits all or? It, it really, it depends upon each individual. It so they're individual? Individualized, that is correct. So we deal with Medicaid clients, which is elderly and chronically ill. Mm -hmm. We also deal with private pay which could be anybody, but it generally is the elderly. And for the Medicaid clients, it comes from, the, our opportunities come from case management companies in New Hampshire down through Medicaid. And for our private pay, it could come from anybody, but we have two ladies in our office, Ann and Laura, who do a wonderful job and they personalize everything and they go out and do a free assessment and then take it from there. It really depends upon what the individual needs. Oh, so you evaluate what their needs are, whether it's help, so they could get help with grocery shopping or light housework. Exactly. It could be light housekeeping. It could be medication reminders. It could be uh, Alzheimer's and dementia care, personal care, transportation, respite care, you name it. We really, we do a lot of different things. So they're able to stay in their homes longer? Does yes. That, does... Yes. And it, it's proven that if they can stay in their own homes, just like anybody, you feel more comfortable and happier about things. Oh, that's great. Do, yes. And if they're ill, do they heal faster? Or? Yes, they generally heal faster and they feel better. And again, just like when you don't feel where we're, would you like to be? In your own home. They're no different. Mm -hmm. And they like consistency and they don't like change. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we provide, consistency from a, care po or a caregiver standpoint. And whatever, we reassess whenever we need to. Our private pay uh, girls are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if they need anything, they can just call. Oh, that's great. So mm -hmm. what about kids and family? Can they get calls from your staff, say they live out of state? Can they call in and um, have that arrangement set up so that after the first meeting, they can just call and get updates on their parents yes. and see how they're doing? Yes, that is correct. And a, a lot of that happens, and we mm -hmm. handle a lot of that. Uh, we also have uh, individualized uh, sheets that we have in the, in the home that the caregiver will write notes. And then on a weekly basis or even daily, depending upon what the family wants, we can send them emails or scan and, and fax things and email things. So we can keep them updated on how their mother or father or parents are doing on a regular basis. Oh, that's great. Yes, it works out very well. So. What is case manager versus an in-home provider? The case, the private pay case manager uh, girls, basically what they do is they go and assess the client in the client's home. Mm -hmm. So 
maybe uh, there are area rugs that uh, become very dangerous for the client because they shuffle their feet so they can easily trip on them. Maybe if it's an Alzheimer's client, they take the no, uh, knobs off the stove so they don't turn them on and forget about them. Uh, so they do go out and do a personalized assessment and then figure out from there and make suggestions as far as what they think a client could use. And a lot of times they start off slow mm -hmm. and a lot of times it picks up because once they get comfortable with somebody coming in, a caregiver coming in, uh, they add hours because they realize, well, this really works out very well for me. Oh, great. So they match them up personality-wise too? Yes. And they try the best they can to do that. Oh, that's yes. great. Um, and what type of approach is used when you do meet the extended family? Is it just, is it really business-like? Is it in a comfortable setting? No, it's, we try to make it very comfortable. And Do you go to people's homes and meet there? Yes, that's oh, exactly great. what we do. Our private pay uh, girls go to the client's home, generally to the client's home, and the family is there, and they're part of discussions. And we look for input information on the client, history on the client. Maybe the client um, is very capable of telling their story and we listen to them as well. Maybe mm -hmm. they have dementia and Alzheimer's and you have to get more uh, of the information from the family members, which is fine. We, again, it, everything's personalized to that client and everybody's different. Some may need just a couple hours a week. Some may need 24 hours a day, seven days a week coverage. So it really depends upon the client and the needs. Wow. And you're really involved in the community from your website. Can you tell me about some of the things that you're involved in and, and how yes. you get there? Yes, we do a lot of different things. We do different walks uh, for breast cancer, for Alzheimer's walk, for the NAMI walk. Uh, we, once, a, uh, uh, once a month we do uh, go to the soup kitchen and, and serve dinner to the uh, seniors. Oh, that's um, nice. We have virtual dementia tours that we offer. We're certified to do virtual dementia tours, so we go to different places or have people come in and we educate them on what it really is like to have some dementia or Alzheimer's. And we have like a 10 minute exercise for them to do, which becomes very challenging and frustrating for a lot of people. And we get a lot of different reactions from that. Oh, wow. um, so, so and, what are some of the things that they do in that? Well, uh, for instance, uh, <coughs> the room gets darkened. You put gloves on them, rubber bands around a couple of fingers to kind of, uh, you know, make it more difficult for them to pick things up. Uh, we put goggles on and put the Vaseline in them and because when you have uh, difficulty seeing in an older age, you don't have the peripheral vision, you don't have the vision that you used to have. Um, so we put things in, the, in their soles so it makes it a little more prickly so it's not as comfortable to walk. Uh, we put earphones on them with static mm -hmm. and because when uh, that you, and you tell them what to do when they go in, five different things that they need to do. Mm -hmm. And they get an idea that it's not as easy as you think. And uh, people have all types of uh, reactions from frustrating, to talking to themselves, mm -hmm. to swearing, to um, just taking things off and ending it after a few minutes, uh, to crying, and, but they just get a better appreciation what their loved one is going through every day, all day. Do you also do that with the people that work for you? So yes, that they... we offer that. We offer okay. that. Um, we offer that to them. We offer that. Do you do you think it helps to create empathy? It sounds yes. like it would. Yes, empathy and understanding. And I think most people hear about it, talk about it, but to actually try to live it for 10 minutes, it's, it's, my, it's interesting. So I, that must actually help the caregiver de-escalate. Yes. Yes. Because it must be frustrating That's to see patient. that happen or, mm -hmm. you know, to have a parent, or, you know, you think the notebook. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's I difficult. mean, it must be hard to lose mm -hmm. somebody that way. Right. Yes, and it, it really is. It, that's what it's better understanding because with Alzheimer's and dementia, it's key on how you handle them. If you handle them correctly, it diffuses things. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it can escalate and it can get very difficult. That's One of the other things we do also, we're coming up on, is we're 
doing a bone marrow uh, drive in, in April. Mm -hmm. um, so, which is going to be interesting as well. So, we're looking for people to come and and come in and get swabbed in the mouth, and hopefully they're a match for somebody. So that's all that's involved in the test. A yes, swab. that's all. That's it. Quick little swab of the cheek. That's it. It's really easy. Really? Yep. Is there a lot of paperwork to fill out? No. 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 One little form. So where will that be happening? At, at our office. Mm -hmm. At in 156 Londonderry. Harvey Road in Londonderry. Fantastic. Well, the barbecue and a couple other events going on. It'll be fun. What if it's snowing? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make other arrangements. But I will cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it does snow a lot this year. It has snowed. Oh, and um, so back to that case where you actually make them fail. Can anybody in the community sign up for that? Yes. We, yes, really? we offer it uh, different times, and we go to different facilities. Um, we've, uh, we offer it, uh, it's probably at least a, two or three times a month mm -hmm. we're offering it. And we've offered it to people to come into our office as well as different facilities, because it's a lot of different uh, long-term care facilities around New Hampshire that have Alzheimer's and dementia wings that mm -hmm. staff would be helpful to, for the staff to understand that as well. Great. What other types of groups would that be helpful for? Any other type of nonprofits that deal with seniors, maybe? Yeah, anybody that really interacts with the seniors. Uh, it could be long-term care facilities, could be senior centers, um, it could be assisted living facilities, could be um, just have them come into our office because, again, there are many people around that have family members, uh, whether it be mother, father, or grandmother, grandfather, that are going through this. And to better understand that and appreciate it, um, to come in for, for 10, 15 minutes and they get a better understanding of what, what they're really going through. That is great service to the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. and What's your web page so people can look that up and get the right information? Sure, it's mashomecare.com. And uh, we do have information on our blog about the virtual dementia tour. And um, I post it on Facebook whenever we have one. Um, What's the Facebook page? It's just facebook.com slash memories are sacred. And uh, I'll post, you know, when we have a date. And uh, usually we ask that people call and um, set a time. Point. Yep, but it is free. and. Uh, Yep, so just come check us out on Facebook. That's great. Yep. So bone marrow. I also saw something about stockings for seniors. What is that about? Stockings is my favorite. That's is my favorite like part of working for MAS. Um, <laughs> so every Christmas, we uh, well, we, we usually start around August. Uh, we ask local businesses to um, donate, uh, you know, gift certificates, and uh, we ask the, the public to donate. Uh, any any sort of toiletries or puzzles. Um, we have trees up in a lot of Hannafords around the area, and people can go in and, and take a stocking off of a tree, and it has a gift idea. They can purchase that, bring it into the customer service desk, and we collect referrals from um, case managers, social workers in, in New Hampshire and Maine and Rhode Island, and um, anybody that needs a little extra cheer around the holidays, any senior, um, maybe doesn't have family around or... Um, is struggling a little bit in one way or another. And we uh, collect these donations, wrap them up, and deliver them closer to the holidays. And it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. Oh, that is nice. Is there any other things that you do in the community or within the business itself? What other areas do you serve? Well, we also do the meal that we serve at mm -hmm. the, the soup kitchen once a month. Mm -hmm. And we offer this VDT training, and um, we do the community walks oh, to tell raise me about money. The community walks. What do you do those for? Well, we try. We get a group of people together, and we try to recruit as many people as we can mm -hmm. to go on. Uh, we've been involved with the Alzheimer's walk. Mm -hmm. We've been involved with the breast cancer walk, NAMI walk out of Concord, and the brain injury walk out of uh, Hampton. I think that is out of. Wow. So. so very busy. A lot of walking. <laughs> yes. Do you have a large staff? Yes. We have approximately in-house in New Hampshire about 50 people now. Oh, great. And company-wide, we have just over 1,000. Wow. And which states are you located in? We're in Maine, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. 
And do they all operate pretty much the same way? Maine is a little different. We have um, six branches up in Maine. We're opening our seventh on April 1st in Belfast. And uh, they do, they have more of a focus on home care rather than medical staffing. I, I always feel like New Hampshire has a little bit more in recruiting nationwide. Um, Maine does, it's a little bit of a wider range of services. They do mental and behavioral health services, uh, a lot of children's services for kids with, that are on the autism spectrum. Um, so yeah, they, they just do a little bit more um, with main care and um, we're, we're all over the place up there. And we hope to have about nine branches by the end of the year. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what other areas are you in besides, so Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont? Uh, Rhode say? Island and Rhode Massachusetts. Island. Yep, so we have a branch in Worcester and a branch in North Providence, Rhode Island as well. Wow, so when people look at the website, will they expect to see the same thing in Rhode Island and Massachusetts? Services are a little different depending on the state, but we all pretty much have the same goal to provide a, you know, a really wonderful home care to people um, where they can stay in their own homes as long as possible and be independent. Um, but, you know, caregivers are a little different. In Rhode Island state law, you have to be a, a CNA to be a caregiver or a homemaker. There's different titles, things like that. But mm -hmm. um, our goals are all the same. Do you do background same. checks on your employees? Yes, yes we do. <laughs> Driving record checks, criminal background checks, reference checks, uh, BEAS, which is a Bureau of uh, Elderly and Adult Services checks to make sure that there's no uh, um, abuse or neglect in their background. So mm -hmm. we do a lot of... A lot of different things too. A lot of screening. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. That's great. So yeah. families can feel safe and secure. Yes. Yes. And does, does their insurance or Medicaid cover it in any way to help them stay at home? It depends. Uh, if you have to be qualified to get in Medicaid, and that's from a physical and financial point. And okay. really, what happens if a person applies for Medicaid, the state a state nurse goes out and assesses and determines if physically and financially they fit and mm -hmm. there are different uh, requirements so if they fit then they get hours and what happens is state nurse puts in for it goes down to a case management company and then case management company gives it out to one of the agencies which there are many but uh, we are one of the, the biggest in New Hampshire for Medicaid. Oh, great. So what's the process a family would go through if they're contacting you? Can you just bring us through it? Like, sure. Uh, you know. uh, from a private pay standpoint? Right. Okay. What happens is um, we get a call from whether it's the client or a family member, most likely a family, mem mm -hmm. family member. And when we get the call, we give it to either Ann or Laura. They're our private pay client services managers. And they go out, they, get, they contact the family, decide what's going on, get some information go out and do a free assessment, mm -hmm. talk to the family, talk to the client, and figure out some things about what the client needs. And again, it's a lot of it is education, because a lot of people just don't understand when mom and dad get elderly and they lose uh, abilities, and it's hard for them to understand because again, well, they Well, we don't expect our parents to ever get old. Exactly, right? or to falter. And it, that's exactly. what happens. And a lot of times you can look normal, but if you have some dementia or Alzheimer's, it's very difficult for them to understand that and how to deal with somebody with that. And that's where Ann and Laura come in as far as educating them and getting them to the right resources. Now, MAS might be the best resource for them, but if not, then they're more than willing to educate them and point them in different directions if need be. So, so if they did need to be assessed, by the state for Medicaid and they really didn't know that service was available, would you direct them there yes, too? Yes, definitely, exactly. And we have a director of nurses, Nicole, who used to be a case manager and is very adept at Medicaid and can help somebody uh, get through the paperwork, and which can be a daunting task, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. confusing for them. So she's very good about helping them through that process as well. What about spouses? Because, you know, I think when you're that age, you've been together so long and, you know, it's private, it's at home, you don't want to tell anybody about it. So mm -hmm. is their mm -hmm. privacy really protected? Are they going to... Yes, there are I'm just sure. HIPAA it, it violations that we are very much aware of. Okay. And nobody, 
You know, so it's right in line with the HIPAA. Yes, it's yes. The law that and that's one of the issues we run into as well. It could be a couple that maybe the wife has faltered and the husband's taking care of her, but it's difficult because the husband is not young in himself, and then all of a sudden he becomes ill, and then what do they do? Right. So just a few hours a week can make a big difference, even with just respite care, just allow him to get out of the house for a few hours just to... Or give him a little break, a break. or her a break. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So do they help with um, personal care, grooming? Yes. Could be many different things. Could oh, be really? helping them take a bath uh, or take a shower. Could be just fixing them a, a light meal or just do a light cleaning of the house or... Mm -hmm. Bring them to a doctor's appointment. Help with laundry. Anything you can think of like that, yes. Okay. Just to alleviate that, just to give them a break. Mm -hmm. Well, it must be interesting for the people that work for you, though. I mean, seniors are filled with a wealth of information yes. and the yes. stories they must tell. Yes. yes, they are. And it really, you can really make a difference in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really special about it. And they bond very quickly. Yes. And it's hard not to when you're in there two, three, four days a week. Absolutely. And somebody really needs your assistance. And, uh, and it, is, it works out very well. And it really makes a difference in their lives. It sounds like a good job for a stay-at-home mom to sure. do. Is that something that you have a lot of or a little of? Yes, we have a lot of. We have a lot of, the, we have a lot of wide spectrum of type of people, if you will. Some people that work five to 10 hours a week to people that work 40 plus hours a week. It really depends upon the individual, but we have over 300 clients now, and we have all types of individuals, uh, whether it be single moms or young women, or even some men, although you know most of our clients like had females take care of them, just old school, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, but there are any family members, uh, it happens a lot. And so any, really anybody can become a, what we call a personal care person. We have to train them, and they have to fit their requirements, but that happens a lot. Wow. So what about the marketing end? What comes up on your end? Anything that we missed? Um, no, I mean, it, it's easy for me um, to market because especially all the things we do in the community, um, makes it easy for people to like us, so that's, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, uh, what's a little challenging for me is that we do have three very different brands. There's MAS Medical Staffing, MAS Home Care, mm -hmm. and MAS Technology Staffing. Um, so to kind of keep one voice uh, throughout all three very different areas um, is a little challenging, but uh, I love marketing and I love this company. And um, when, you, when you love your product, that's, that's when it's really easy to do your job. Absolutely. And is there anything that we miss that people should know about your company? How long has it been around again? We originally started in June of 2002 okay. and then branched off from there um, as we were a per diem staffing firm, medical staffing firm at that time. Mm -hmm. And then we branched off into Portland, Maine, and then uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and then home care grew out of that mm. uh, in all three states. And then the Stockings for Seniors came along three to four years ago. Mm -hmm. three, we've three done years. it three years now. Uh -huh. And that has uh, been very rewarding yeah. as well. Yeah. It does sound rewarding. It is. And we find yeah. that uh, a lot of times we bring gifts, or gift bags to clients, and uh, they're more interested in just your time. Mm -hmm. They like just to talk and have somebody to visit with. Sure. Uh, they enjoy the gifts, but... If you just give them 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time, I mean, that's more precious to mm -hmm. them. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So is that what drives you to do the job that you do? Yes. I've, I've always been passionate about the elderly. I've uh, had wonderful parents and grandparents to look up to. And um, you just I've, I've always respected them. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they have a lot that they've offered and a lot of wisdom and you can learn a lot of different things from them. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed working with them as well. Great. So what was your favorite book of all time growing up? Uh, I'd have to say The Greatest Generation. And one of the reasons is because of just the type of people that went to war and that was just expected. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I could have done that and signed up early and what they went through 
And even today, they're so proud. A lot of times, they get, can get services, but they don't want all the services. Or they don't want any, they just think they can just take care of it themselves. Unfortunately, sometimes it gets to a point where they really can't. Mm -hmm. But they're very proud people, and uh, I, I enjoy working with them. That's great. Well, thank you again sure. for being here. And if people need to contact you, can you give them your website again? Sure. Uh, the website is mashomecare.com, and the phone number is 603-296-0960. Okay. And is there an 800 number for those that are not in New Hampshire? Yes. Oh. <laughs> we never <laughs> keep track of that one. Um, oh, we we do sorry. have an 800 number um, for the New Hampshire office, which is 800-657-6517. Okay, so they can um, call there, and if they're in another state, they, they can, can get them to the right place. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, home care sounds like it's changed a lot over the years, and it sounds like you provide great services to the community. Yes, right. we do. It's yeah. grown a lot, and it's going to continue, obviously, yes. with the baby boomers getting older mm -hmm. every day. It's, it's going to even be more of a need as, as we move along. Absolutely. And that people should just feel comfortable calling and realize that it's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And absolutely. again, we'll direct them any place that we feel that it should be directed, whether it's with our services or somebody else's services. We'll, we'll get them uh, to the right people. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for joining sure. us. Well, thank you thank very you much for having, for having us. us. My pleasure. And next time, keep asking questions. And if you have seniors at home that you know of or somebody that could use these services, this is one company you want to check out because if they can't help you, they'll send you to someone who can. We'll see you soon.